Your students won't stop talking about Among Us and Fortnite. You're trying to teach and they're fighting about which anime is the best in the chat. Today I'm going to show you how to deal with all of that by adjusting Zoom settings on the fly. Hey there, I'm Emily Eggers and this is Teaching from the Couch, where I help you create an amazing online classroom without losing your mind. Let's head over to the screen share and I'll show you all of it inside of Zoom. Okay, so when you're working in Zoom, you should be seeing this kind of screen. What I like to do is I always like to have the participants tab open and the chat. So that way on my right hand side, I can see who's here and I can let people in as needed and things like that. And I can see what the students are saying in the chat. Um, I, I generally over here on this little side right here, you've got the dot, dot, dot. And I generally have the chat set to everyone publicly and privately just because we have a lot of special ed students that need to talk to Paris privately or talk to me privately. Um, one benefit is that Zoom will download your chat and it will include any private messages, even if they weren't to you. So if a student is privately chatting another student, that will be downloaded to your computer. So that works super well. Um, there are times that I turn off the chat so no one can chat or that they can only chat with me. Um, just make sure that you turn it back on. <laughs> I've had problems with that before where I forget to turn the chat back on. Another thing that can come in really handy when you're doing a live lesson in Zoom is to um, share your screen. And so students will be able to see what you're working, what you're trying to show them. Okay, so once you've shared your screen, you'll have this control panel at the bottom and you'll have your window here. When there are more students, you'll this can be bigger and you can actually make it like really huge if needed. Once you are sharing your screen, you can share your computer sound. This is really important if you're showing a video or if you're playing audio because otherwise the students are only hearing what's coming out of your speakers and then back through your microphone. And that's actually like really hard to hear. So if you share the computer sound, any sound that would come out of your speakers will also go through Zoom. It works very well. Cool thing is you can move this around wherever you need it. So if there's something at the bottom that you need, then you can move it around. I tend to move things around a lot while I'm teaching. Um, when it's recording it in the Zoom recording, it won't record all of these pieces moving. Another cool feature about screen sharing is I can pause the share and my students will still see this screen, but I can move around. So even if I go over here, they will still be seeing that other screen on the pause. Once I resume sharing, then it'll switch to whatever um, whatever screen I'm on. Okay, so now we're back in Zoom. I give my students a lot of work time during class. And one thing that I've noticed is they really don't like hearing me help other students while they're working. So rather than have them leaving the Zoom and having to come back at a certain time, I tell them go down here to by the mute and then say, leave computer audio. They won't be able to hear me, they won't be able to talk to me, but it'll be less distracting. And then when they come back from working, and I'll tell them what time, they will have to be back at like 2.50 or something. And I'll tell them, okay, be back in Zoom at 2.50. They'll come back and then they'll rejoin computer audio. So their screen, like they never actually leave the Zoom. You can still see them if they leave their video on, um, but they, they don't have to listen to you helping other students and get distracted. If you are a teacher who allows virtual backgrounds or video filters, those can be accessed down here where it says stop video. You've got the little up arrow and you would go to choose virtual background or choose video filter. The filters can be really fun, but also super distracting because students really love to add goofy stuff and be kind of goofy. I try to ignore it when they're doing lots of filters, but sometimes it's super distracting to their classmates. So you may need to put the nix on that and usually just letting them know, hey, this is super distracting. Maybe we could do that another time. 
helps them understand that this is just not the time for it. There are other times that we can be playing with the filters and it can be super fun, but right now is not one of those times. One of the most important features in Zoom that I wanna show you today is this button right here, mute all. It will instantly mute everyone. You can mute all current and new participants. I usually let them unmute themselves though. If I don't do that, then I would have to go in and unmute them and that's not fun. But I, if somebody is just getting off topic, if there's noise coming from somewhere and I can't figure out where it is, mute all. Just mute all of them and be done. Um, another great thing is when you are a participant in a Zoom meeting, here in the participants menu, so you'll tell students, go to the participants, and then right here, they'll have a button that says raise hand. Obviously, I'm the host, so I don't have that button, but they'll have a button that says raise hand, and it will virtually raise their hand, and there'll be a little thing that pops up. They'll come right to the top of all the uh, names, and it'll say they have their hand raised, and then they can lower their hand by pressing that same button. I encourage my students to use this because I can't always see them doing this when I'm in gallery mode or if I'm presenting, if I'm sharing my screen, I definitely can't see it. So instead of having everybody unmute and interrupt when they have a question, they hit that button and then they wait patiently until I'm done talking or finishing my sentence. And then I call on them and they ask their question. Another cool thing are these reactions. I absolutely love this. They've expanded these reactions since last uh, spring. And it's a great way to gauge knowledge. So if students are, are working on something, you can ask them, how are we feeling about this? And you can say, use the thumbs up emoji if you're just okay. Use the heart if you are totally, you got this, you don't need any help, you wanna do it all by yourself. Use the laughing, crying emoji if you need tons of help and you're so lost and confused or the face if you're lost and confused or something like that, right? And then each student will hit whatever emoji it is and it'll show up in the corner of their video. So if you have it in gallery mode, you can see real quickly who is doing okay and who could use some more help. And it'll stay there for five seconds and then it'll go away. Finally, the last thing I wanna show you is breakout rooms. Breakout rooms are great, especially if you have other adults in your space like paraprofessionals or special ed teachers. Once you click on breakout rooms, you can assign them automatically, which is really great for randomized breakout rooms, but you can also assign them manually. And that's what I usually do. I usually remember to make more rooms than I think I need. If I have three adults in my space, I'll make four rooms just in case, because once the rooms are made and open, you can't add another room. You can only move people around. So I always make more breakout rooms than I think I need. So I've got my breakout rooms. And then when I go into here and say assign, obviously when I have participants, I can just click on their names to assign them to a certain room. Any students who are not assigned will be staying here in the main room with me. And what the reason that I stay in the main room is because if a student comes in late, you don't really know that when you're in the breakout room. It doesn't ding, it doesn't show you the participants. So I stay in the main room and use that as a breakout room rather than having my own that I go join. Um, it just makes things a little bit simpler and there's always somebody in the main room keeping an eye on things. So the students who are working independently, who really don't want any help but might need it, they usually stay in the main room with me. And then the paraprofessionals take students who want some help and they go into a breakout room with an adult. I try to split the students evenly among the paraprofessionals in my space. And I also try to put certain students with certain paras that they know well and that they like. So breakout rooms are super duper helpful for those scenarios. Um, I use them for independent work time a lot where I'll say, okay, in the chat, if you wanna work with an adult, let me know. If you wanna work by yourself, let me know in the chat. And then I start making the rooms and students tell me where they want to be and I assign them to certain rooms. I open those rooms and they all go to work. Um, another cool thing you can do with breakout rooms is you can use them as like the hallway. So if you would normally ask a student out into the hallway to deal with a behavior or something like that, you could open a breakout room and assign them to it and join them in there. 
or assign the student and the para in there and they can chat real quick about misbehaviors and then come back when they're ready. There's lots of cool things you can do with breakout rooms. If you've got any really cool ideas, let me know in the comments because I'm always looking for new and fun ways to use Zoom. Those are some really easy, quick tips and tricks that you can do during the Zoom meeting. If you are looking for ways to set up your settings before the Zoom meeting and you're set up your defaults, check out this video right here. If you're looking for ways to have more fun with your students in an online classroom, check out this video right here.